This is the inventory screen video for inventory items that you're going to be adding to your current store inventory. Now, when you look at the inventory information at the top of the screen, you're looking at the store for this particular inventory item that you're adding. There's a uh, link to the sales, the customer, and the store location at the top of the screen. There's the commit and revert button for the cloud server in case you're on the server through the browser. There's a uh, inventory ID that is not editable. You cannot change it. And it's reflected over here on the actual information. The first step in using this screen is to go ahead and pick a store from the drop down, And it would be the store that you're in. So you would add that information by clicking on it. And what it'll do is it'll fill in the information across the top. If you need to edit the store information for whatever reason, you can click on this header where it's underlined up here. And it'll take you to the store location screen where you can edit that if you need to. Say, for example, there was an address change or something like that. You can edit in the store location screen. Coming down here to the bottom, you're going to note that the first thing is the product itself. And as it was stated earlier, when we're in the invoice screen, there's a suffix on each one of these products that you're adding where you put the store ID. In this case, S1 is store one. So if you create a new product, it could be XYZ, whatever, you would put in parents S1 if you're this is for store one's inventory system. Why would we do this? This allows you to have an inventory that's separate by each store, but yet all combined together in one screen location. For example, when we were in the invoice and I clicked on the invoice product field, it showed the multiple amount of product that was actually in there by each individual store. Now, if you're putting an individual item in and it's not in every store, you could still put the S1 in there, for example, for your store, so that that product is identified to your store. The next thing in this screen is the next field, which is the standard price that you're selling the item with. When you look at the product on the uh, sales, you'll see that this information is combined with the store and the product ID so that you can see what actually this item should be sold for. This is a combined field, which combines information is used in a couple places throughout the app. So this is not normally edited. You would not change this. That's a calculated field. The product code is your primary product code. If you have a vendor part number and that's what you're using, you could put the vendor part number in here if you want to, or you can put it in the product information tab, which we'll cover in a few minutes. For the individual product that you're buying, this is a changeable location field, meaning that if you have different vendors and you want to go over there and see the vendor information and also be able to use that information to uh, provide the uh, record for that particular sale, let's go back over here and go back into the inventory screen, that information would be derived from here. If you click on this, it's a drop down from that screen we just looked at for all the vendors that you have that you may be using. This is the primary vendor that you normally purchase this item from. If you change the primary vendor, you can change it in here, now making a new primary vendor. We're going to explain a little bit more in the product information that there is a, there's the ability to have multiple vendors and pick them. But next, let's look at the low and high level. This is standard buying level that you would buy no more than. And when you get to a low level that you'd repurchase. Now, this field here is the current on hand. If this field is below or equal to the amount of the low level, there will be a red background put behind, behind this field. And then in the reports for the low inventory report or even in the inventory store report, you will see that there is a red background indicating that that item is ready to be re, uh, repurchased. Or you can make a decision on certain items if they're close to the low and you want to buy them because they're fast movers, you can go ahead and buy them before they even hit the low mark. This is a calculated field here, and so is this one. This is from the purchase screen that shows you the amount of items that have been received, and that's a total of how many have been received. And what happens, you can see that this is 12 and this is 11. What this means is that on hand there are 11. One was sold from the 12 that are out there, and then these numbers will continuously change as, and they're calculated based on the on hand that is actually available and what has been purchased. So this is always going to be updated. 
The individual line item here is, as you see here, it says invoice history. Do not add data to this portal. You can't. It's blank. You're not going to be able to add data. This is a history of each individual sale by this product ID, by this store, for that product. So you can look in here and you can get a history or a trend analysis of how often this item sells. And if you need to, you can click the icon at the end of the row to go to the actual invoice uh, input screen to see the information for that particular invoice item. Down at the bottom, it's going to give you the quantity that were actually sold. It's going to give you the uh, VAT collection or sales tax amount that was collected for the sales history and also the total amount of dollar value that was sold for this. This is vital information if you're doing trend analysis. Is your price too high and you're not selling things? Or is your price too low and you're selling all kinds of it but you're not making much profit? This information is used in this screen to derive that so you know basically uh, if you're on correct as far as your pricing is concerned. By the way, this serial number actually comes from the purchase screen. Uh, if this item is purchased and received, the serial number for this item will be indicated here. and It'll also be added to the invoice as you're uh, selling the item. That serial number would be put in this screen on the invoice itself from the part or piece that you're actually sending out the door with the customer. Let's go ahead and look at the purchase status. The purchase status shows you the actual purchase record that brought those products into this item for that particular store. If you click on this record, it will take you, or this icon, it'll take you back to the purchase record, and you can see the purchase record for this item. This shows you the summary total of the line total of the purchase, the count and amount, and the bottom down here is the summary for all the records in here. So this is an individual for 12. Obviously, you keep adding lines in the purchase record. And as with the other record, when you click on this, this information is actually coming from the purchase record. So there's no need to update it in this screen. The last tab on this particular <coughs> screen is the product inf <coughs> information. So this is the actual narrative for the item that you're uh, putting in there as a product category. In this case, it's I put in drive chain. That may not be exactly correct for uh, uh, this particular store product, but I'm not the one that's deciding that. It would be for the people in the store. Then the product type, you can further describe this as a complete narrative of the product type for that particular product uh, category. Then there's a uh, shelf life. If this is a shelf life item where it has to be used, like an oil lubricant or anything like that of that nature or, or some kind of a thing that... Um, is sent out of the store with a shelf life or on the shelf itself, you indicate that in this area. The weight of the item for, for shipping, the length, so you can measure the length as far as uh, boxing, so you have the correct boxing, and the cost for shipping per pounds. In this case, it's $2 per pound for the two pound seven. Or you can, if you want to, you can put in here, it's your choice to put the actual current shipping cost for an item with this weight and measure you can put the product information notes down here. And what that can be is can also include, include primary information as for as primary vendors and pricing. Or you can use the inventory UDF user defined fields that allow you for this product to put in all kinds of information. For example, this particular uh, store in October of 2013 was selling this part number for the vendor part number for $19. If you wanted to, you can continue running this down, and as this particular vendor changes or gets too expensive, you can see a trend of the actual information, and you can have an infinite number of records in here if you want to. This one may mean this one might be primary vendors. This can be something else, and something else is four wide, so you can add in additional lines. And as with other ones, you can go to the UDF uh, uh, button on the main menu for inventory, and go in here and look at the individual records in the UDF records and do fines on those for certain information that is contained in these fields. The last one is a paste-in uh, thing here. If you have an iPad or you want to put uh, a desktop picture into your desktop picture library, you can go ahead and insert that in here as a picture of the actual item. So you can do this for visual inventory. If you're carrying around your iPad, you can, you can do a physical inventory of all the items 
to make sure that the information in this is correct and you have the right amount remaining on the shelf or and or if there's an error you can indicate in there in the product information something about why that is not on the shelf when you thought it was going to be there. Uh, maybe it was actually traded to a different store as far as uh, sending an invoice and, and purchase order to send this item and it was never annotated in the purchase order in, or in an invoice that needs to be updated. Uh, so that concludes this particular screen which is the inventory. If you have questions about this screen uh, including the reports, these will be covered separately in a different video. Thank you.